Digital Enterprise Bosch. He has been instrumental in setting up the digital business, leveraging Bosch competencies in IoT technologies, augmented reality, product development, and user experience. Lokesh is responsible for establishing and scaling up the business in India, Mexico, Turkey, and the ASEAN countries. He's a strong proponent of the people at the center philosophy and brings together dynamic teams of intent and action comprising of millennials and those with rich industry experience. Lokesh holds a BTEC from BVB College of Engineering India and an MBA from Latrobe University, Australia. Please welcome Lokesh on stage. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the time. I do understand that you've been bombarded with all tech words of Industry 4 Auto, IoT and stuff. So when Raman asked me to come and present, I was asking him, what do you want me to talk? Because I've been managing industrial IoT topic for a few years now. I was here year on year. So I thought I'll shift the gear and perhaps give you what is happening with us. And with that reference, uh, perhaps draw a line for all of us who belong to manufacturing enterprises. How is the digital changing the world? And at Bosch, these mega trends are very, very visible. And I want to make, I want to confess very clearly here that we are extremely paranoid. 132, 134 years of existence, 80 billion euro conglomerate. We don't know whether we would run into, are we going to exist after 100 years? That's a question which asked us to rethink about our positioning in the market. And these, and these uh, all mega trends, what you see, all are affecting, I'm sure people have spoken about the society where we live in, where we belong to, and we have to leave a right society for our kids and going further. And technology, that impact is extremely high. My fellow speakers did highlight you very, very deep into technology, and, and these are extremely importance for us, and hence we change the game, connected that we will try to become a world-leading IoT company. You must be wondering, Bosch, Sparkplug, Myco, just around the corner, Bosch, automotive company, what is it trying to do with IoT? Where did it all start? It all started from a very three fundamental core belief for us. One is sensors. We are the largest MEM sensor producer of the world. So we had that know-how inside. We are a manufacturing blue-collar associates, and we take a pride in showing that. I'm being an automobile engineer for me, even though I'm suited, booted today here, the blue-collar still holds very much close to the heart. And the software hub, that's India. We started 30 years ago as four people picked out of our manufacturing plant, sent to Germany to get trained onto diesel systems. And that four people came back and now, currently, we are 24,000 software hub of Bosch. We're a backbone of Bosch. So these three sensors, software, and the domain made us really believe that we can truly become an IoT company. The entire technology stack of sensors, assembly line, your MES layer, your analytics, your ERP connect, and cloud, all the TIC6 technology stack, we can say that we perhaps have all of these know-how in-house at Bosch. And that made us say that we can at least dream to become an IoT company. Are we, have we already turned into it? Not yet. We started way back in 2012. Few of the goals we took on our own is by 2020, we want all our electronic products to be connected. And we are 80% done with that. And we wanted to play across core three domains. Bosch is not just into industry like automotive, it also into home appliances. Bosch Siemens home appliances, perhaps you are a happy customer with that. And the residential, which is a lot of home appliances parts into that. And by 2025, when we connect, that's the first element. And what do you do after connecting? We want to get an insight out of it. We want to get the intelligence out of it. So that's where AI will play a major role into it, for sure. Hence, we decided to keep aside close to 400 million euro to invest. And I again take a second pride in telling that India is benefiting heavily onto it. Way back in 2012, when I was working as a technical assistant to the president or CEO of Bosch Software, I'm sitting in Bangalore, I was asked to prepare a white paper on data analytics, which I asked me, Lokesh, what do you think? 
we should do. Fresh out of a mindset, we did a bunch of our, all of us being part of a management development program, created that white paper, resulted into 150 people organization sitting in Bangalore, adding value data analytics leading into AI. Second center was in Palo Alto, third center in Germany. So started way back in Bangalore. So all this plays a key role in where we take. And as we speak, every day at Bosch is, there is a connected product which is sitting on our IoT suite. We acquired a company called Bosch Software Innovations way back in 2012, was making a financial algorithm based tool, a product. We killed the product. We retained those 35, 40 bright people and we gave them a complete empowerment. In three years down the line, they came up with a beautiful product, what we in my management jargon call a sexy product called IoT Suite. And all our autonomous driving to our residential products, to an industrial network is playing on this platform. And we also started taking this to external market from 2015 onwards. There are a few customers in India, a few in Turkey, a few in Mexico, a few in Europe. All that bundled together have close to 250 international IoT projects. Bosch and external have been realized. We also decided that we will have 1 billion euro saving only through industry 4.0 application inside our 278 plants. As on date, end of 2018, 800 million achieved. And we are going to cross beyond 1 billion by 2020 for sure. And smart cities is one of the area where we decided to play there, not as the one who will go and bid the projects, but work as a technology player agnostic and allow the people to bid those projects and be a backbone of those. And this happens around the world. So while this is the case, what I want to showcase is a small glimpse of a video which will perhaps give you how digital transformation is affecting Bosch and we'll come back and summarize those things. The digital transformation affects all of us, whether in the private environment or at work. Also at Bosch, this change is a daily topic. But what does digital transformation mean? The term digital transformation describes how a digital image is created from various things in our lives. This means that companies, humans, machines and processes are all connected and this adds value to our lives. It is in a way a digital twin, a digital replica of physical assets, processes and systems used for different purposes. This technological change opens up new possibilities for the customer, possibilities that take place partially or even completely in this new digital world. An example of this is the postcard, which has been replaced by messenger apps. The opportunity to send pictures, text and data to friends has been shifted to the digital world. Another everyday example would be the use of digital maps as we find them in navigation devices. If we now put the location information of each individual driver, we get an overview of the traffic or free parking spaces in the city in real time. This can take place, for example, if each driver shares his location by smartphone or vehicle. This is an example of smart mobility. In the future, artificial intelligence will become more important in the digital world. Already we find artificial intelligence in autonomous driving or assistance systems like Siri or Alexa. They all work based on big data. Big data means the evaluation and utilization of constantly changing data from many various sources. Another area of digital transformation is smart home and smart city. The networking of appliances in houses, such as the climate control or kitchen appliances, give us new possibilities for use. All things that are networked can communicate with each other. Networking of houses and entire cities results in an enormous number of new business models. Also for Bosch, digitalization and connectivity enable the interaction between any physical things and the digital twin. This combination results in new services and solutions, also for Bosch. The same applies to networking within factories and production. This is called Connected Industry 4.0, or smart production. Machines communicate with each other, order parts independently, or inform about the current status in real time. 
product will still remain the core of our company, but for the Internet of Things we have to think beyond the products. So for example, software as a new product category, but also business model innovations as new uh, categories, and of course digitally based services. Digital transformation is speeding up the economy. For us as Bosch, this also means new challenges. To meet these challenges, it is important for us to be flexible and to have a readiness to learn. We as Bosch learn every day, and every employee will also face new challenges every day. The world connects, so do we. An open exchange within teams and cross locations will make Bosch more successful through digital transformation. And this means we have to bring people from different functions together to build these new IoT-based solutions for Bosch. And I believe the fact that Bosch is active in so many domains, in so many uh, areas, is a huge asset for our company. So if we manage to bring together people from these different functions, we will have really a big impact. I think we have to be curious to understand many of the new technologies that are evolving, to be able to assess them. That's why we have to be willing to learn, to continuously learn, based on the offerings we have within Bosch, but also outside of Bosch. To achieve these goals, we will prepare together. Therefore, we have created a new learning portal. There you can find all relevant information about this topic and anything you are interested in or have questions about. So that, that was a CEO, global CEO, Dr. Denner, talking. And he, I'm sure why did he get this job way back in 2011? He envisioned converting a manufacturing enterprise into an IoT company. And he has done brilliantly good in the last few years of his career. And, and we are here trying to be an IoT company, and, and we are on the right path. Few of the solutions which you did highlight was like, we want to bring that into a real life scenario. The home zone park pilot, these are autonomous cars that are anyway going to be a reality very soon. But we started from a humble beginning of, can I start park it on his own? And we have joined hands with Daimler. We have joined hands with with Frankfurt and the Dresden airports where you go and you park your vehicle, it automatically, you leave it at a certain destination and it parks automatically and when you're back, the, park, the car is waiting for you. All these are possible when you have your sensors, your systems, your software solutions embedded into physical environment. We also worked very, very closely on, on industrial networks, especially on the logistics. We do understand that the logistics is a nightmare if you don't monitor it on real-time basis. One of the classic examples is our solution called Track and Trace, which a sensor and a gateway get connected to your container, start tracking from destination A to B on all the aspects of humidity, temperature, tilt, and, and vibration. One of the small examples could be like Africa to Europe, bananas get shipped, and, and we monitor those humidity of those bananas which get transported to Germany, and then you connect back to the insurance able to do it. And these are, have been worked, the product, was conceptualized in Germany, but entire design, development, and ready to market was done based in Bangalore and Coimbatore. And this is an aspect of India, a software hub, which was known as a captive center, a global in-house center, which is more of an extended workbench, now really getting into core of the business, where they look up to India as someone who can add value, because we, as an Indians, can think beyond what we can do. And that's, that's element which has resulted into these kind of solutions. While this is a true case, we also transformed our mobility business. One of a classic example is e-bikes. A bikes, you say there, is a, is a statement. The, the bicycles have been attached with our e-bike solution, but we are not selling it as just product. We're selling it as a service. If you walk into Berlin and get out of the Berlin railway station, you see Coop, C-O-U-P, which is a scooter sharing uh, possibility, and that belongs to Bosch. No one knows it. We don't make two wheelers. But what we do is we manage that as a service that connected to our IoT suite, the entire your payment gateway to offering that as a service belongs to Bosch. And these are the new models we are working on. While we, while we offer product as service, we also offer the entire platform to come up with new use cases possible. And the e-bike is not a product, it's a health device for people who want to be healthy, who want to monitor their entire, after 40 you realize that you need to take care of health. And that's what 
We realize that in India, but in Germany or Europe, perhaps they realize very early in a stage that you need to be healthy. And these are all added into it. And we looked at that. And we started offering to multiple partners who could come onto our IoT suite, start, prepare, start working on our IoT suite, and create more of APIs and offer these as solutions. And this goes beyond as machine learning or AI to take it further. While that's been the case, did we do it out of the go? One overnight we stood up and say we're going to make it? No, it has become very systematic. First is we enabled the company. As I mentioned, we acquired companies. And we acquired those companies and gave them complete empowerment. Didn't, didn't put them in a Bosch injection, say that, hey, you have to work in an environment. No, we created a small, small business unit like a startups, give them empire, empire, entire empowerment to work on the way they want. Only result was like it has to be a good product. We didn't ask for the revenue in the first instance. We didn't burn cash like all the new age technology, like Ubers or Olas of the world, but we did burn the cash in a systematic way. And all of that has started giving in one single possibility of all our electronic components should be connected. Then we started creating small, small business units like BSH, even the wash home appliances was belonging to Siemens. We acquired that company and created a small business unit in that to say, home connect, drive it like a startup. We connected, connected e-bikes, which you just see that it's part of our automotive electronics business division, but some small startup there. Smart agriculture created in, in our software innovation as a software. While this has been a case, few of them has converted themselves into a bigger business unit. One of the classic examples is Bosch Connected Industry, which I belong to. I started as one person as a startup three years ago when I came to ARC. Raman asked me to present how am I transforming this. That was very, very new. I had only two people. Now we have business unit which span across all the five units and making adding revenue to the top line at the same time, saving bottom line. And that has become business unit. Similarly, connected mobility solutions, a new age mobility solutions, the coop I spoke about, e-bikes, these are all forming as a different business unit. And residential IoT is one more. So all this, using a cross-dimensional ecosystem, we are able to slowly start transforming our company and turning into a big IoT player. While we do it, I summarize telling that why we were able to do it. The most important was a value-driven approach. We, we are a manufacturing company. We continue to be a manufacturing company. We continue to add value, but it's just that it's all bundled as a vision to become an IoT company. And that's where, when, I, when we get into plants, we do a detailed value stream analysis, then say, what are the possibility to digitize those uh, possibility of industry for our application there? Not just jump into this and say that, hey, I have a product, let's plug it in and get, get a KPI drawn and just start looking at a data possibility. We don't do that. There has to be meaning. For me, internally, it's difficult to get an approval because the ROA has to be less than two years. Externally, I can still have a conversation with CEO. With Bosch card, I can get a, with Bosch card, I can get a conversation easily with CXOs. But internally, it's more difficult because you always look at like, what are you bringing on table. And hence, we are, we are more towards a value-driven approach. And we also work on a lot of innovation. 8% of our overall revenue is always kept aside. 8 to 10% is kept aside for innovation. These are necessarily, not necessarily being, being funded by our customer. These are our own in-house away from our revenue. And most importantly, practitioner, whatever we develop, we invest, install, check, fail, keep it completely ready, then we go to market. Hence, perhaps we are a little delay to bringing onto a market, but when we come in, we come in with a value that it's invented for life, it's for the lifetime. It's all under one roof. And we call it a simply connected. We were invented for life. Going further, that remains our main vision statement, but we want to be simply connected. When you simply get connected, a lot of possibilities do exist. Trust that was useful. Thank you very much. I did save some more. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that.